Coming up on WNBD News at noon, the Peoria Police Department is now taking some new steps to mitigate the spread of COVID-19. We'll show you what that means for you and your family's safety. Also, all Illinois schools are changing some of their teaching structures. We'll show you how local school districts are making sure that students continue to learn even outside of the classroom. And how to talk to your kids about COVID-19. The conversations to help you put them at ease. Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us. I'm Shelby Roberts. First this afternoon, 128 new cases of COVID-19 have been confirmed right here in Illinois. Yesterday, the Illinois Department of Health confirmed the total number of cases in the state now sits at 288. The patients range in age from 9 to 99 years old. The Illinois Department of Public Health says an additional 20 people at a long-term care facility in DuPage County all tested positive. Three residents and 12 employees are now infected with COVID-19. Governor J.B. Pritzker says the virus has no boundaries. Last Monday, just nine days ago, our known case count was only at 11 and all in one county. Yesterday's total was 160 known cases across 15 counties, ages 9 to 91. And even though Illinois is being recognized as a national leader in response to COVID-19, make no mistake, these numbers will get much worse before they get better. And during an update yesterday, health department officials in central Illinois announced that there were zero new cases in the Tri-County area, but they are preparing for more cases to come. They recommend that you approach your decisions as if you have already been exposed and how you can stop transmission. People with low risk still need to be cautious in an effort to protect others in the community. Lab tests are being allocated to large reference labs in areas with high activity. It is turning out to be about a six day time to get results for our normal patients who are coming in and wanting to be tested that are outpatient. So someone who's not hospitalized with severe respiratory illness. And Dr. Roska says that right now they don't have the capability of testing everyone. She says that they are prioritizing people who are at a high risk of dying if they get COVID-19. The Peoria Police Department is now taking some additional steps to mitigate the spread of the virus. The department has suspended certain lobby services and it's streamlining patrols. Now visitors will need to wait to take photos for outside government IDs like for Family Corps. Clearance letters, general fingerprinting and other services will be delayed until the CDC gives the all clear. Additional efforts to streamline patrol operations are meant to limit exposure to everyone involved. Definitely want people to understand there are officers on the street. We are still here to protect and serve. We will still respond to emergencies. It's just the type of calls that may be streamlined to an officer at a desk would be non-emergency situations where no one is in danger. And emergency services are still available by calling 911. For all other concerns, you can call the non-emergency line. That number is on your screen, 309-673-4521. Well, new at noon, the Salvation Army is temporarily suspending service at the Peoria Child Care Center starting today. This comes as an effort to prevent the risk of spreading the coronavirus. Parents with children in the program have been notified already. In a statement to WMBD News, the Tri-County Commander said, quote, We recognize how challenging these times are for everyone. Nothing is more important to us than the health and safety of our children, their families, and our employees, end quote. Center administrators say the facility has seen a steady decrease in attendance at the center over the last two weeks and during the closure administrators tell us that they will be deep cleaning all of the rooms and items in the daycare center. Many Caterpillar workers will now have to work from home. In a letter to employees, the executive office says employees who work in office locations should work from home starting today, and that's through the end of the month. Employees in production will continue operations in order to meet global customer needs. Well, a bill to help families weather the COVID-19 pandemic has passed and it is now signed into law. Congresswoman Sherry Bustos advocated for the Families First Coronavirus Response Act. The president signed the bill yesterday. Bustos visited the Jump Trading Simulation and Education Center yesterday to explain how the bill would make sure that those are struggling will get financial help. 
We want to make sure, make sure that uh, people who are losing their jobs or cannot work right now um, don't have to go bankrupt, can pay their bills, can support their families. Um, and so that's why we are calling it the Families, families First Act. The second component of it is we want to make sure that our children are fed, um, that our families are fed, and so we, uh, we added some extra funding for our supplemental nutritional program. And Congresswoman Busto says that legislators are still considering the White House's $1 trillion rescue plan that would send checks to many Americans in an effort to boost the economy. While with blood drives canceled across central Illinois, there is a critical need for donations of all different blood types. A spokesperson for the Mississippi Valley Regional Blood Center says that the blood supply is low and they need healthy people to donate. In order to help make that process easier, the center has expanded hours at donation centers and they've even set up mobile drives. They're reminding potential donors that you can help save a life. As we look at our schedule just for the rest of the month and add up all of the donations that we were projected to collect at blood drives that have been canceled, and by the way, this is across our entire service region from basically Madison, Wisconsin and down to St. Louis, uh, it's a total of more than 3,000 donations that we had on our books that we expected to collect. And he goes on to say that the donation process is always sanitary, but they're taking some extra precautions right now. If you're healthy and you're able to donate and you're interested, you can find out how to do so on our website, ciproud.com. Well, students will stay off of Bradley University's campus for the rest of the semester. Instead, they'll be shifting to online learning. President Gary Roberts made that call yesterday, one day after Illinois State University announced the same measures. Employees will also be largely shifting to off-campus work, encouraged to telecommute if possible. The school's spring commencement, which was scheduled for May 16th, has also been canceled at this time. Restaurants and bars in normal may now have another factor that could affect business. Illinois State University announced that they will be transitioning to online classes through the rest of the semester. They've also instructed all students that can go home to do so. Many bars and restaurants in normal rely on the thousands of students to bring them business during the school year. The economic impact that this will have on businesses isn't fully known at this time, but restaurant owners say it could very well impact their sales. It's safe to assume that students are easily a third of our business, um, you know, just from delivery and late night. It's just hard to gauge it. We've been, you know, I've been, I'm probably estimating between 40 and 50 percent drop off right now. Um, it could get way worse. I don't know. And that owner goes on to say that they are operating as if we were in the middle of summer with no students in town. Several organizations in McLean County are teaming up to make COVID-19 updates easier for people to access. Yesterday, the Chamber of Commerce, the Economic Development Council, and the Convention and Visitors Bureau in McLean County revealed a new tool to get you up to speed with just the click of a mouse. BNPrepared.org is a new portal that's addressing concerns of employers, employees, and families in McLean County. Those coordinators say the economic impact of COVID-19 is not known at this time, but this new website they say will show people how the pandemic is impacting the community day to day. During this time of social distancing, they also say it's a way of helping everyone stay connected. There's a variety of links. It's really based off of whether you're an employer or if you're an employee or if you're a resident just wanting to know which restaurants are open and how they're actually getting food out. Is it available? via DoorDash or for pick. Hopin says that BNPrepared.org will be updated daily with current and accurate information available to everyone in McLean County. Well, in other news, the village of Peoria Heights is considering adjusting parking spots in front of businesses and restaurants. The change would help shop owners accommodate curbside pickup and delivery for the next few weeks. Many business owners in the area are working to stay open during Governor J.B. Pritzker's ban on dining and eating. The temporary ban has made it harder for owners, they say, to make money. Mayor Michael Phelan says that the village is working with businesses and others to create signs and designate parking spaces. If we can set a parking spot aside or two to safely um, encourage people to, to come and uh, spend some money at the local businesses and get food to go, then that's, that's our goal. The mayor says that they're focusing on six restaurants that don't have parking lots. Those include Sullivan's, Joe's Italian, and the Bistro. 
Well, we know it's a difficult time for many people, so you can find more COVID-19 information and resources to help yourself and your family over on our website. That's CIProud.com. You'll want to hover over the news tab and click on coronavirus.